Dan! 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 Nah, he's not seeing me. Say hello. Would you like some soup? I'm not a tramp, Michael. No, no, no. I'll, I'm just offering you something to eat, like. Oh, yeah. No. Well, what, what have you got? Well, I can do you a cup of beans. A cup of beans? But you never had a cup of beans, no, man? No. Oh, I, oh, you're in for a treat, oh, here. Right. Oh, stay there. Yeah, right. As, as ordered, one cup of beans, and I've, I've put a sausage in and all, so it's, it's a Michael special. Oh, it's lovely, it's like, sort of like a savoury 99. Hi, hi! <laughs> you can use the sausage for the scoot the beans with. Oh, I see, yeah. Have you got a spoon? No. You haven't got a spoon? It's a bank holiday. Well, that's come in, do those dodgy floor joists, didn't I? What was that you were doing just then? I was, I was just walking through my house. In, in the style of James Bond. <laughs> oh. Bang, 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 bang. <laughs> well, you quite enjoyed that. <laughs> was that a snub nosed doozy? Yes, I think it was. <laughs> Scuzzy headstone there. Yeah, mm. that's one of those 80s ones, isn't it? Black granite. It's a waste, really, because if you slice that three-wise, laid it end-to-end, -end, you have the lion's share of the work surface for a pog-and-pole kitchen. <laughs> the fact that when a lot of these gravestones go missing, I wouldn't be surprised if they ended up as the work surfaces in luxury kitchens. They'd have to turn them upside down, of course, so that, uh, you know, they, it didn't uh, reveal the details of the dead in uh, recessed lettering, which would also collect crumbs. <laughs> yes, Chad. Uh, hello, Michael. What are you doing? Uh, just uh, destroying my cereals. <laughs> oh, that, that was the best full English breakfast I've had since Gary Wilmot's wedding. It was very superb. Oh, yeah, I would, um, I'd have that three times a day if I could, but, uh, I'd be dead! It'd kill you. Yeah, it's, uh, it's cholesterol. Scottish people eat it. <laughs> in fact, I've made a few notes. Um, sorry, yes. Uh, bacon, ten on ten. Uh, button mushrooms, bingo. Black pudding, snap. Uh, minor criticism, more distance between the eggs and the beans. <laughs> um, I, I may want to mix them, but I want that to be my decision. Use a sausage as a breakwater. <laughs> so, but I'm nitpicking. Uh, on the whole, a very good effort. Seven on ten. Let's make love. What do you think is Sonia's best feature? Uh, her hair. Nope. Her neck. Try again. Her eyes. Her eyes. No, it's going to take forever now. It's her feet. Lovely, dainty feet. Uh, I don't like big feet. It reminds me of gammon. <laughs> I wonder if I can walk like this. <laughs> that could have been R2D2. <laughs> Guy dogs for the blind. It's cruel, really, isn't it? Yeah. Forcing a dog to pull a man round all day. <laughs> Not fair on either of them. Well, listeners, I have someone on the line who fears he may be a gay. He's married, so he wishes to remain anonymous. I shall only be using his Christian name. I'm talking to Domingo in Little Oakley. <laughs> nope, he's gone. Well, I miss this caravan. I used to enjoy sitting here like this. Sometimes like this. Sometimes I lean forward and watch the TV. Where? Well, there's a fourth position. Sometimes he's like sitting here like this. No, look at that. I bet you never thought that you could make toast in a microwave. That's not toast, Michael. That's hot floppy bread. So you end almost every anecdote with the phrase, needless to say, I had the last laugh. Yeah, well, you, you can end some of your chapters with, 
needles to say <laughs> I, I took drugs. They're pulping the remaining unsold 14,000 copies of my book next Thursday. Mm. So they can make room for books on Cockney killers. What is Cockney? Cockney, Sonia, is an area in London where criminals live. <laughs> the police don't arrest them because, and they're very strict about this, they only slaughter their own. <laughs> and they have funerals with horses and floral tributes that say things like mum and stab. They don't sound so evil, these men like flowers. Sonia, these guys, some of the stunts they pull, they'll chain you to a car that's been clamped. So the only way you can get yourself free is by phoning the council, but you can't do that because they've shoved your mobile phone up your backside. Mobile phone not hurt too much. It's only small. No, Sonia, this is in the late 80s. When, when mobile phones were like big black plastic bricks with a, a rubber breadstick sticking out of the top. It was agony. Sonia, this is no laughing matter. You know, if you're at a fun fair, these guys might put your head in a candy floss machine. And they might be standing around having a great laugh at you with your big pink hair. But you may be very, very dizzy. Right, I'll tell you an anecdote. In 1975, I was catching the London train from Crewe Station. It was very crowded. I found myself in a last-minute rush for the one remaining seat with a tall, good-looking man with colour-length hair. It was the 70s. Buckaroo! When I sat down on the chair, I looked up and realised it was none other than Peter Purvis. It was at the height of his Blue Peter fame. He said, you jammy bastard, and quick as a flash, I replied, don't be blue, Peter. <laughs> Needless to say, I had the last laugh.